Hi guys, welcome back. Getting near Christmas. Um, right, I'm gonna make a start on my platter bowl, my bowl in a bowl today. I'm, I'm gonna do the outside of it and then I'm gonna have to call it quits so that and break off because I'm going to a Christmas market today. It's Sunday today, um, for the of, of, of December, whatever the date is. 18th. 18th of December, good, yes, correct. Pass that test. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna turn this. Now, I have put this on the lathe once. I've, I've, what I've done, I've got a recess in the back, 54 mil hole. I just drilled that with my, uh, one of my shark teeth bits. Um, and I'm mounting that on the chuck until I can get my foot in here. I'm gonna put a recess in here for my big 130 mil jaws, because I I want this to have a, a big base. This is, I'm not taking much wood off of this at all. I'm more gonna be sloping just that around have a big foot on the bottom, but I'm gonna do a recess. Because it's gonna have food in it, I'm, I'm gonna use a food safe finish, one of these ones, on it. And being that I can re-chuck it, if I put a, a mortise in the bottom, I can re-chuck it at any time. I can always bring it out, just giving it a fresh, freshen up coat, uh, and that keep it nice. It's only gonna be crisps, it's not gonna have wet food, so it's gonna be quite all right. Um, right, so, I'll get this mounted on the chuck. And we'll start doing some of that. Been, been quite busy uh, this week. Been doing loads of gonks and things like that. <laughs> Christmas gonks. Been doing some, I've been doing some cowboy ones. Been turning some cowboy hats. I was lucky. You know, um, fascinate me, cowboy hats. I love, I love doing them. And I've, I've never had the chance to really do a big one. Because, you know, here in the UK, we can't just go and chop a tree down and take a big wet lump of tree home. We can't do that. And... Where I am, I've, I've not sort of got in touch with any tree surgeons or that yet to get the wood. And most of it, they don't want to give you because they want it for selling now. Right, I've got hold of that. Um, yeah, but over the back of me, so some guy chopped in. We've got a park right at the back where I take the dogs for a walk. And just down the road, some guy, I think, I'm sure it's like a magnolia or something like that tree. It's quite a big, chunky one. And he'd cut it all back. And he dumped it all in the park. So I've been going in the mornings with me saw and cutting some bits of wood off of it <laughs> and bring them back. I've sealed some ends and got some to dry and I've, I've got some wet and I'm turning little miniature cowboy hats. I'll show you them later on. I should do one. Right, I have had this on the lathe because it was a bit out of round and I wanted to just see how it was going to turn. Now it's got, um, on the end grain here, it's, it's really, really hard and it's um, it's got some tear out on the end grain. I think I'm going to probably have a bit of trouble with that. I'll get a bit of bounce when I come round. I'm all right that side, all right that side. When I get to the middle, it's a bit bouncy. So we'll see how we go with that. But I'm going to do a few cuts with traditional, a few cuts with carbide. We'll see what tools work well on it, what works best, what gives a good finish. And I'm going to put the recess in the bottom ready to turn around. And then that'll be on another video. I'll do the hollowing out of it, which is going to be a bowl inside a bowl. Right, so, okay, guys. A quick one on... Um, oh, look at that, I've got my tool rest on the side now. Right, hang on, I have to take that oh, I didn't even think so. A tool rest won't come underneath it. Um, anyone that has been buying, so my posting has stopped now. I'm not posting anything out till after Christmas now because it's just becoming a nightmare. Royal Mail are just losing so many, well, they're not losing them. The parcels just ain't even getting collected. I went round the other day and everything I'd posted at the beginning and the end, the beginning of this week and the end of last week hadn't even been collected from the post office. They were set out the back in sacks because of all these strike actions. It's, it's just got ridiculous. And the woman told me that at, around at the sorting office, they've got cages of mail outside because they can't even get it inside the offices. There's cages of mail stuck there. So I'm not posting because it's getting ridiculous. You're not gonna get it before Christmas now. There's, there's just nothing I can do about that. Let me put the tool rest on there. So I'm afraid now, guys, that I'm finished with any posting before Christmas. So I do apologise on that, but I oh, can't really do much about Royal Mail. Mm -hmm. So, right, okay. Um, yeah, quick one. You all see me? You all saw me do me little bit where I drew me chuck out. Works perfect now. Absolutely brilliant. But I know a lot of people moan about the little chuck keys because you get them and they're this. They're the smaller version of this one. I don't have a problem with this one, but I'm probably going to make a little wooden handle. I made a little wooden handle for mine, the little ones. Makes them lovely. Just um, I'll do a little slot on the router table, put it on, turn it, put it in, epoxy it in, and it's perfect now. 
Pardon me, I've got two of these little keys and I've done it to both of them. Makes them nice and comfortable to use. They sit on your lathe bed better, so don't fall through your lathe bed. They're all right, you can have them there. They sit nice, you know, and uh, I mean, if you want, really want, put a little rare earth magnet in the epoxy and it'll stick to it. Be nice then, you will never lose it. But yeah, they work really comfortable now. So I'm gonna do it with this one as well. I've just gotta do a bigger one for that. So, right, there you go, enough of that. Right, okay, I'm gonna do a little bit on the outside of this. It's freezing cold out today, it's all ice, but I've got my wood burner going, and this 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 silver that I've got all round here, I mean, this is brick built. And before I put anything up, when I first come into here, I lined it all with this stuff. I just got it from Screw Fix, it's insulated. I'll tell you what, I'm, well, you can see, I'm in a t-shirt, and it's, it's like minus two out there this morning. Ice everywhere, and I'm, I'm in a t-shirt, it's lovely. Not, not to make you jealous, guys, all you poor ones that can't get out of your workshops. <laughs> oh, God. It's so warm in here. <laughs> right, anyway, it's going to fall off and hit me now because I've done that, isn't it? Right. I'm going to start off using a bowl gouge. I'm just going to make a few cuts around it. What are we going to use? Right. I'm just going to start off with me, me half inch, well, be, yeah, it's half inch bowl gouge. Short handle one, I'm gonna start off with that. Just make a few light cuts around the side here, see how we get on, okay? Right now, speed. Now, when I first put this on, I couldn't get it over 400. The lathe was like that, I couldn't go over 400. I took a little bit off the front and now I'm all right. So, we'll see what we can do. It's all running nice and true at the moment. I'm up at 800 at the moment. Right now, I'm just at 1,000 and yeah, I'm starting to get a bit of shake. Everything's starting to shake. So I'm just gonna see. There, yeah, I've got the 1,200. I've got to 1,200 and it's settled down. So I'm gonna start at that. Right. Come in with some light cuts. Got my tool handle down. Just using it for a shear cut at the moment, getting nice shavings coming off. Now, you can come in and do a push if you want. You can come in, pick up on the bevel, and come up and see, because I'm on that bevel, I don't know whether you can hear that, but watch the chisel, look. I'm getting to the middle, now it starts to bounce. So I'm getting a bit of bevel bounce when I get to the middle of it. And that's why I'm coming along like this and doing it more as a shear cut. See this way, my handle dropped right down, I'm not getting it. Well, I'm not going to go right off that end, I'm going to come back from that side. Like I said, I don't want to lose too much off the diameter. That's feeling quite good, actually. But if you see, as soon as I go this way, once I get here, I start to get a bit of bevel bounce. So that's why, drop the tool handle down, get that cut, and that way that's slicing then, and you get a nice cut. But I just want to very quickly, I'm going to try a 15mm round carbide. Just to see. Right, this is a 15mm round carbide. Now again, you could come in like this, but that removed the wood quick. But the finish, because I said I've got that punky grain there, look, oh, the finish is going to be terrible. Okay. Now, 
again, you could use your square carbide, but if, in all honesty, because this is a bowl blank. Now, again, let's get it straight. Never ever would you use one of these, okay? Never that, because that, it will come round when it gets to this side and the grain's coming across, you see the grain's running, it will come here and it will pick that up and try and rip that whole side off. You get a very nasty catch. So never ever use that one. What is that one? That's, the, that's your spindle roughing gouge. Right, now, if you want to use a carbide, your square carbide, again, that would be fine. But again, I would not come in this way because again, it wants to try and chunk bits off. If you want to use your carbide, push that way. Come in that way and work your way up there. So put your rest around there. So put a tall rest there, you might better if you just go over to there a little bit. Okay, let me just clear that off, get that down. So if you want to come in on, on a square carbide, if you want to use a square carbide chisel, come in this way. Now I've got to be careful, I, can't, I don't want to take too much wood off of this, so it's going to make some light cuts here. Right, I'm coming out a bit. Right, now, I'm going to go a little bit more, just so I can show you. Right, okay. Now, look, you get beautiful shavings. And there, you're still going to get the tear out a bit, because it's, it's the way this grain is here. But... If you're gonna do it with a square, come that way. Don't go, don't go this way in. Come that way, okay? Now I've got to try and clean that up a bit. So we'll see if we can clean it up a little bit. If we use the round and come round this way, you'll see the difference on the cut. I don't want to, I've got to take some off of here, but I don't want to take nothing off of this edge here. Now you can see how, let me just quickly here. Right, well, this is where our center line is, is down here. Right, let me just draw up this way. Right, roughly. So this is where our center line is. So centers down there, I'm actually cutting with my carbide up here, okay? This is where I'm cutting. And I don't want to come in the flat here. I'm above, slightly above center anyway on that. And I want to come in here and come across, okay? And by coming this way, Well, you can see what's going there, I'm getting shavings, okay? Because I'm actually sheer cutting, because when I'm coming off the side, I've got the bevel of the cutter is actually rubbing here, okay? So I've got the bevel rubbing. That's the bevel rubbing there. And I can get some beautiful, fine shavings coming off. Now there's that punky bit, you can just... When I get to that punky bit, I just get a very slight bounce. But I'm going through that, I'm getting away from it now. Right, lovely and smooth there. So I now want to just bring this corner around a bit. Right, now we'll have a look and see what sort of finish we've got. Remember that's off the carbide on that. Right, now as you can see, you can see here where this uh, end grain is, because there's a grain going across here. And we've got no tear. We've got a tiny, tiny little bit here at this bit. I've got none on this side here at all. So by, by coming in like this, we get all that tear out and it looks horrible. 
by dropping that handle down and I'm working up here and when I'm here if you can see in there I'm actually on the bevel of the cutter okay I'm not sure if I was sheer scraping I'd be this way okay this way with no bevel support or if you want to go that way with no bevel support that'd be a sheer scraping scraping sheer scraping because I'm dropping this down I've now got my bevel in contact with the wood and I'm coming around this way and that's why I'm getting this I'm sheer cutting that's cut you don't get that when you scrape okay cutting it and that way I've got rid of that that torn grain there got that tiny little bit there okay so now I'm going to come round just shape this a little bit i'm not i don't want to change that diameter from the outside and i'm not taking a great deal off of this because it's, it's meant to be a big big bowl right that got all that out of the way so now let's oh i probably didn't do that any good right okay so i'm back on the bowl gouge for the moment so what i want to do is i want to come around this corner I'm going to see what. I'm getting, I've got a slight bump just there. I want to get rid of. We'll see what what the cut's like off of here. It's a little bit awkward here, so I'm right up against the wall. I'm not trying to take any diameter down here. I'm just trying to get a as clean a finish on this bit as I can now I'm going to come round and shape a bit more on this bottom right tools down I'm below I'm lower on here I'm actually below centre because I'm sheer cutting it and I'm getting those Savings now, look. Right, I'm okay here now on this top bit. Got a slight little ridge just there. Right, got rid of that. Right, so now we're coming round from this side here. blend this in I want to take a little bit away from this bottom edge here right that's the sort of slope I want from there Round there, because I want it. I want to keep this bowl deep and big at the top. Right. So I'm going to take a nice soft cut now and try and blend these two in. Slight bump there. Right. Round there. Slight bump there. We'll get rid of that. Nice gentle cut, so that's getting rid of all that torn grain there. Right, okay, I can feel a bit there. So I've got to come round, I'm going to come back round this side a bit. And then I'm going to get my foot in there, then shape away around from that. Yeah, that feels all right there. Right, okay. So now... Yep, we've got no torn grain there. Yeah, we've got rid of all that torn grain. Look at that. That's all right. That's come out nice now. I'm happy with that. Right, now I want to put my foot on the bottom. And like I said, I'm going to have a big recess. And that's going to stay there. So I'm going to take my centre away. I'm going to get this out of the way for a minute. Right, 
okay, I'm just gonna check that everything stayed tight there. Yep, that's it. Don't over tight and don't go wrenching, you just damage fibers. Right. So now my my chuck jaws are 130 mil for this big these big jaws. Now uh, I've got my caliper set for this. Oh, I'm going to move this this down out of the way. Sorry, darling. There you go. You stay that side. That's it. We're not better over there now. Right. So you've all seen this done with the calipers. So we start up. You come in with this side. So we'll come in with that side. So that's a short point. Right. And you match the two up. So you can see that's not matching up. Just in a little bit. In a little bit more. Oh, it keeps trying to track. Right, there we are. And we've got the two points matching up. Now, if you're not if you're not comfortable doing that, there are other ways, because some people don't like to be putting that in and they're not comfortable. Now, an easy one, make yourself one of these. Right, you've got a little pin now there. You don't even have to have your tool rest in the way. Right, just come in with that, put that in the centre, pencil through there, and there you go. I've also got holes for different chucks, look. That one would do a 50. So that one would do my um, my tenon, and this one would do my mortise for these, these jaws, for the, the jaws I've actually got in there, okay? Little piece of wood like that, and that's all you need. And But remember, when you do it, these are half. So if you're 50 mil jaws, the hole's at 25 mil. Just put that on centre. It's not gonna grab, it's not gonna go nowhere. And you can come in and just make your make your marks. Mine's to 130, so I'm out here. Okay? And that's a quick and easy thing to make. Right, now then, I'm going to put my, my recess in here. And for that, as I said before, I've got a tool for that. That I made up. I've just done... Well, I'll do the saw blades for my parting tool. I weld two together. It's not pretty, but it's functional. Now, it's got to be deep. That's about right, actually. I think that'd be enough. I think I'll hold on that. I think that'd be enough. Might have to go a little bit more because I'm going to just take a little shear cut off of this bottom here. Well, a little cut off the bottom, I should say. Right, okay, that'll do. That'll do me. Right. Now I'll just want to take away some of this bottom here. Now again, as I've said, you can use your carbide, you could use your square. You could use your square carbide here, and just the same, the small cuts, don't take, don't be greedy. And that will actually give you a nice clean finish on the bottom here. Little bit high for my centre. Okay, but you can come in with your square and just go across like that. Now I could scrape it at the bottom. I'm not. I'm going to come in here, and I'm actually going to come in. I've got my spindle gouge here. So I'm just going to come in, pick up the cut, 
quite clear. A little bit of bounce there. Yeah, roll it over. Straight that bit out. Right, I'm getting a bit of bounce on that, on that bottom. I can feel it's a little bit uneven there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in this way. Clean it up a bit. It's got a little bit of uh, feels a little bit bouncy there, a bit, a bit rough. Right, so that's those two. Now we can come in, uh, good one to use on this negative brake. We can come in with the negative brake. On the round carbide, he can clean it up with that. So you can use all your tools, you don't have to use one specific tool for doing all this. Just, just wanting to demonstrate all the different tools you can use for it, okay? Right, I'm back on my bowl gouge. Now, I need to lower my... can't get my tool rest down low enough on this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change that for a minute. Because I don't need a big tool rest, I'm going over to my... My little six inch one because I'm above centre and that's why I'm getting a bit of a, a bit of bounce in there. Right, okay, let's come in here. A little bit of bounce in that middle there. That's the one getting that bounce, right there you go. That's better. Right now, I'm just gonna pick up this bit here. Well I'm gonna put a few lines in there because this is gonna be the finished bottom bit. So for that I'm just gonna use my detail 90 and I'm gonna put a Ring in there, ring in there, and I might put one out here. There we go, put a little bit deeper. Okay, and that'll then finish that off. And that's going to be a bit of sanding on here. Just going to come in here and clean that little bit there. I think that's actually the grain pattern there. Right, okay. So now, Coming across this bottom, I'm going to lower my tool rest down on the other side. Now, as you can see, I'm well below centre and I want to come along here and actually shear scrape this bottom. Well, shear cut this bottom. So I want those fibres, look, like that. Okay, I don't no dust. I'm actually taking this in slightly because I don't want to sit on the inner roof. I want it to sit out here. Okay, I want a big, a big foot on the bottom of this. There we go. Right, and I can see there's a very slight line there because I just caught it with the bottom of my banjo. All gentle cuts, nice gentle cuts. There we go, okay. No, still see a little line there. I push, I, I push my banjo onto it. That's it. Right, okay guys, that's that. That's the turning bit, I want to get a, bit, a little bit of sanding done on that. How are we doing on time there? 30 minutes. Right, we're okay. Right. Get that in. It's 180 grit. I'm going to turn the speed down just a little bit. Just under a thousand.
the sort of country. Right line there, not sure what that is, we'll see that when we go. Right, 320. that's a sand line right I'm actually going to just very finely cut that and get rid of that Probably a better finish than the sandpaper actually. Right, okay. So I've got that quite nice. So I'm going to use, start with the 240 on that. That's alright. I'm not going to need much sanding on that. I've got such a fine cut. So I'm going to get onto some sand in place here. And so it's just my own sand in place. And actually, I'm going to just. That's it. Get that dust out of that hole there. So it doesn't clog up. Over here. Put this on here. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna 
come in there with a screw chisel because I've got a little bit, got a little line there. I'm thinking that one's not going to do it. I'm going to have to go with a spindle gouge. Uh, right, so I want a nice small, nice small spindle gouge. It's got that little line right in that edge. So, right the barrel. There we are. That's it, that's done. It's only a tiny thing, but it's worth getting rid of it. Right, okay, back to my paste. Put it right in that corner there. That's it. Nice. Right, I'm just stopping it from flicking back at me where I'm first putting it on. Right, okay. Here we go. So I'm going to use a wax on the outside and a food safe on the inside. I need a bit more speed now. Can't do 13. There are 1400. Already getting a shine on it from this. Right now, I need a bit of uh, kitchen towel. Take off the excess. Nice. Right. Just fold that over. When it starts coming up sort of clean, then you know you've got it all worked in. There's no good to be telling you with this stuff because you can't buy it anyway. <laughs> it's not not for sale, it's just something I have for myself. Whether it will be at a later date, I don't know. There's too much involved in going into selling those sort of products. Right, this is just my own wax. I say all the waxes, they're all pretty much the same, a lot of them. Any of your finishes, just use your normal finishes that you use. Find one that you like, guys. Don't, don't use what other people use, find your own one, find what you like. I like the ones I, I make because they work better at speed and I don't like to keep slowing down, putting them on, speeding up. I like to put them on at one speed. This is a bit slow actually, but this is a big bowl, so it's quite still quite heavy. I'm not going to whack it up. Even though I've got it, it's quite safe, so... Right, there we go. And then what I'm going to do over the top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, micro crystalline. If I can open the tin, which I can't. There we go.
So I'm just going to turn this so it's clean a bit of tissue. So as you see guys, you can do this with carbide just as well as you can with a normal chisel. In fact, the carbide gave a beautiful clean finish on that outside. Just roll it over, way above centre is where you want to be. And get on that bevel and get it to cut. Right, okay. Leave it, just give that a little... And then we'll have a look and see what we've got. That's not a bad finish on that. No tear out at all on the end grains. No, nope, that's all gone, no tear out. Right, so there we go guys. So that will now, let me have a look. Yeah, they're gonna expand and that's gonna fit in that. All right. And that's gonna be my base. And I can bring it out Put it, put it back on and give it another finish at any time when I want to. Put another little bit of a finish in there, food safe finish. Right, so, okay guys, as I said, I'm off to a Christmas market today. They've got carol singers and everything, so I'll probably be joining in carol singing and then be last to leave the market. Um, yeah, so, getting in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> Could you take the mickey out of me singing? Oh. <laughs> Darling, you've got the voice of an angel, you have. I know. Hell's angel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, lad. lads. Okay, lads. Lads. No. Lads and lasses. Probably lasses watching this as well. Lads There's and probably lasses. loads of women watch me. Yeah. I get watched all the time. I know. I get loads of women. Well, they'll be jealous now. You're taken. Sometimes. You're taken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taken, yeah, I belong, I belong to you. Right, okay guys, yeah, I'm off to the market and I'll follow this out later on. So, toodle pip, enjoy your day. Bye guys.